own adventure. Today we're checking out the abandoned motels of East Florida. Hey, I'm Larry and this is Your Own Adventure. Today we're checking out the abandoned motels of East Florida. Right behind me we have the Cornette Motel. And we're here in Mims, Florida, which is in between Brevard and Volusia County. It's a point where the Cape Canaveral and Daytona kind of meet, and we're trying to establish the reasoning behind these motels. My theory is that when NASA was first organized, all of these developments turned into motels, and they were able to bring down the, the workers for NASA and help them transition into living in this area by building all these motels. That's my theory anyways, but we're gonna dive deeper and figure out exactly why these motels are here and how they still exist today in the economy. And, you know, we're in the middle of nowhere, so who's staying here? But, but we're gonna dive deeper into the discussion and do some research back in the studio. Before we start talking about motels, Let's talk about the area in question. Daytona through to Cape Canaveral is known as the Space Coast, and it's the hot spot for these abandoned hotels. Although they are still intact and some even servicing tourists, they are very much in the abandoned spectrum. That of course is my own opinion. What would you call them? It is very safe to say that the amount of motels in the Space Coast area began early on with the establishment of the Dixie Highway which you can learn about in this video. I shot this earlier in the year. But even before vehicles would be commonly traveling this sector of Florida, names like Henry Flagler and J.D. Rockefeller brought attention to North Lucia County, AKA Daytona. I'm discouraged. In the 92 years of my life, depressions have come and gone. Prosperity has always returned and will again. But let's get back to the motel. Originally known as a motor court, the term is a combination of the word motor and hotel, first used in 1925 at the Milestone Motel in California. So it's easy to understand why this name didn't come around until after the highway was established. The reason for the term motor court was that in the beginning these accommodations would be a group of single cabins built around a main courtyard. From VintageRoadside.com, many of the new motor courts tended towards a U-shaped design with cottages set perpendicular to the road. Semi-circular drives often featuring a central common area with lush landscaping allowed motorists easy access to their room after a quick check-in at the centrally located office. Right behind me we have the Ranch Motel, another example of semi-abandoned motels on this strip of US-1 heading south towards Cape Canaveral. We're trying to ask the question and figure out what's the deal, why are there so many of these, and what brought them here. During World War II, motor court design underwent another significant change. Building material were in short supply and operators needed to make the most of the material they could find. Individual cabins began to die out in favor of more economical inline rooms, sharing one foundation along with the same plumbing and electrical systems. And it's actually quite interesting that we have so many examples of these motor courts available to visit here in Volusia County today. Shortly after the war, the space race came and motels were in full swing, just needing a bigger reason to expand the Space Coast region. From the Wall Street Journal, the first astronauts in the early 1960s would spend booze-fueled nights at motels along the main road dissecting the town, which is now US-1. Mr. Wolf wrote, the pool areas of the motels became like the roaring fraternity house lounge of Project Mercury. NASA's first human spaceflight program. Steve Hall of VisitSpaceCoast.com Seems like everything was named after rockets in space. There was a satellite motel, there was a starlight motel, the Apollo motel, and the sea missile motel. Local business owners jumped on any opportunity to tie themselves to the space program. And you could still see the architecture today in the existing motels that are in the area. 
and from floridamemory.com, cities near the Cape, such as Titusville, Coco, Melbourne, and Orlando, grew rapidly in population. Factories manufacturing crucial products for the space program emerged all over the state. Space exploration and related industries pumped billions of dollars of federal funding into Florida's economy. We're just going to take a walk down uh, the sidewalk here on US-1 and check out some of these older accommodations and motels that we have to offer here. Um, in the distance you'll see a relic of the past and it looks like they're going to demo this place pretty soon. This is called the Hot Spot Coffee Shop. Looks like an old Wi-Fi internet cafe. And we're just gonna check it out. It's not technically a motel, but it's an accommodation to, to what you might be able to find if you stayed in a motel like the Sunshine Inn right here behind us. But yeah, here we have the Hot Spot Coffee Shop. This is straight out of the 70s. I mean, look at the neon sign on that. If you could get a sign from this area, that'd be the one to get. It looks like they are taping it off for a demo. Looks like they already stripped the paint and maybe they're actually just gonna renovate this place. But it makes you think like, what a different time. This is a internet cafe. You used to have to go into these places to get internet and now you can get internet anywhere from McDonald's, Denny's, pretty much any establishment's going to have free internet. But here it is, we're checking it out. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Look at the, the facade on this thing. We have the, the classic Coquina style. Just beautiful and what an accommodation for your stay here in Daytona if you're staying at the Relax Inn that, that's just right across the way. This is kind of the, the epicenter of the motels in the area. And where we parked actually is really the, the number one motel on the strip here in US-1. It's the best motel that you're gonna be able to find as far as quality, it's a Super 8. Looks like they have two night specials, They've got a jacuzzi and Wi-Fi, all the standard accoutrements of a, a motel of that stature. I don't know if you'd find a jacuzzi anywhere else um, in one of these motels. I love the architecture on this here. This is kind of a, a deco modern style. It's kind of like a, uh, a covering for if you're checking into the motel, get to stay out of the rain. Just beautiful. It's classic Florida and you could tell from the name the Sunshine Inn, Sunshine State, beautiful. But today with most travelers using the interstate highway system, few people go out of their way to find roadside motels. Fewer still remember the traditions of auto camps and tourist courts. However, a growing number of preservation societies and intemperate cultural explorers have begun to hit the exits and travel the original highways again, exploring remnants of Route 66, Highway 40, and US-1, searching for that one singular experience just around the bend. I personally think if you really break down the reality of the area, it's easy to understand the slow deterioration of the roadside motel. Interstate hotels will always be preferred by the economy tourists, and more care goes into the service experience to ensure happy tourists. If you decide to travel by way of US-1 on the Space Coast, you'll understand the local governments aren't helping rejuvenate this corridor along US-1, but rather investing along the major interstates, where most of their income and tourism is paying. It makes things harder for local businesses and owners, entrepreneurs along US-1, and in turn less appealing for tourists to frequent this destination. Unlike North and South Florida, East Central Florida, aka the Space Coast, has no major port. So yes, my original thoughts were pretty correct. 
the space race was to blame for the boom of motels in the area. Being able to cater and house many individuals and families moving to the area for a booming economy was the initial reason for them. Now, however, the motels simply cater towards a different crowd. Some have been rejuvenated into businesses and community support centers, but others have not stood the test of time. The simple fact is, this stretch of Florida is mainly visited for the beachside accommodations. You could drive on the beach here and that's what everybody wants to see. Rarely, maybe two to three times a year, will bookings like Bike Week see the motels that are still functioning filled. Other than that, motel owners are more so landlords, and if you've ever seen the movie Florida Project, it's very true and very real in this part of Florida. But that circles back to the question, what does the future hold for the motels in this area? Well again, I don't think the new space race will have a notable impact on population in the area. You see, the new age of engineering, delivery, supply, manufacturing, and management can all be done at the fingertips of Joe in a virtual space. We no longer need to be tied to a location to help launch a rocket. Instead, the local governments in the area should be focusing on what can be done to support the community members that live in this area, creating a more positive experience for those who are not tourists. How can motels fit into this ideology? I'm not entirely sure, but if you have any ideas, leave them in the comments below. Before I leave you to Larry in the field to finish up the video, we'll go ahead and talk about one of these notable improvements that a motel in the area has actually given back to the community, and it's one of the oldest and one of the first motels or motor courts in Daytona at the Twilight 2, offering long-term rooms with significant curve appeal and legitimate operations. The twilight begins encrusting the walls, trees, and signs with twinkle lights come fall, and by November every year this motel offers one of the best Christmas light shows on the east coast of Florida. Thousands of cars each holiday season show up to see this spectacular display of lights in miniature trains and towns. And if you're ever in the area, this is a completely free thing. Uh, you could obviously leave donations, but you could pull up, park, and you could experience something that you're probably not going to experience anywhere else. But now let's get back out on the streets and check out some more of this history and abandoned motels. Well, we're out here at the Oak Hill Flea Market. I hope that might have shed some light on the mystery of the East Florida motel crisis. If you want to learn more about stuff like this, then subscribe to the channel. It's the best way you could support us creating more videos like this. And other than that, I hope that you get out there and create your own adventure however you can. Spread some positivity, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Maybe we'll check out some new sites and learn a thing or two about some more abandoned places in Florida.